our last sense is arguably our most advanced sense as humans, but it's also the most underdeveloped at birth. And that is our vision or our sense of sight. So we know that infants, when they're born, they are of course very responsive to light, but they look different for a number of different ways. For instance, the way they perceive things varies in terms of their ability to determine resolution, color, facial perception, and depth perception than what it will be in adulthood. So in terms of resolution, what we're really talking about is sensitivity to patterns. And again, we use habituation for this. Some very classic studies would actually paint uh, ping pong paddles with black and white stripes. And the black and white stripes would vary in terms of how thick they were and how many stripes were on each paddle. One paddle would actually not have any black and white stripes and would just be gray. And what we know is if the stripes got very, very, very thin, our brain would just assume that it's gray because we wouldn't be able to differentiate between the stripes. So what I have here is I've drawn a couple different blocks. One of them is just a solid gray. But what we find is that in infancy, they're more likely to confuse and not differentiate between some of these paddles. Of course, the one with the broadest lines, they're going to understand that's not the same as a gray paddle. However, the one with the thinnest lines, they might interpret as being completely the same as gray. Because of this, there's been some movement in developmental psychology to expose and even overexpose infants to very bright contrasts of black and white and lots of patterns early on in infancy. Though it's controversial, some would say you don't need to go and paint the nursery black and white striped, for instance, though others promote it. And so it's the idea that maybe giving them more exposure to the contrast might be more interesting. What we do know is that very early on in the first two months of life, infants can't really look at things that are very detailed. They can't see the difference because things are blurry for them. So they're not going to appreciate it as much. So that might be something they'll more so appreciate later on in their infancy and in their childhood. And we need to talk about colors. Yes, infants can see in color, but their brain is not yet sensitive enough to really determine the nuances between very similar colors. They're very new to seeing things outside the womb. And so because of that, contrasts are good, but it doesn't have to be black and white contrast. We know just bright primary colors or secondary colors are good. So bright yellows, blues, reds, greens, those are really great for newborns. They can see and distinguish the differences. They're less sensitive to all the different colors of mauve or lavender or magenta. So this has become a problem as toy manufacturers start to develop out different toy lines where the same product is available in bright primary colors and in different shades of pink. And the different shades of pink product is more often marketed towards girls. Even things as simple as shape sorters or ring stacks, very common infant toys, if it's all just different shades of pink, it's harder for the infant to differentiate, it's harder for them to learn, and they're actually getting less out of that toy than if it was in bright primary colors which is why it's important to say the whole rainbow is for everybody. All kids of all genders should be playing with the whole rainbow in infancy to help sensitize them to all the different colors. What's really fascinating with this is perhaps due to socialization, we're not entirely sure, is over the lifespan, girls and women tend to be more sensitive to the slight differences in color than boys and men. That is, if you're going to pick out slight differences in paint and you're trying to design between two very similar shades of paint, girls can more often than not have a higher color acuity and, and pick out the slight difference between two shades of paint versus boys and men may see them all as the same and may have a harder time differentiating. Perhaps it's because of the way they're socialized with very similar toys in infancy. So now we know that infants vary as compared to adults in terms of their uh, vision resolution and their color sensitivity. This plays a major role in their facial perception. One of the very first things infants spend a lot of time looking at is the faces of their caregivers. And it's important to understand because resolution is so different in newborns, they see faces very differently. And we've actually found that you can show an infant a picture of a face where the nose is above the eyes or the nose is upside down or the pieces of the face are completely scattered and the infant will not respond to it as though it's different. In fact, using habituation studies, a face that's completely scrambled and upside down looks the same as a typical face for infants up to the first three months of age. Once they get around five months of age, then they start to tell the difference and they start to get better. And one of the reasons for this is because things are so blurry. Now this picture is artificially blurred, but in the first or leftmost image, we can see approximately what a two month old would see when looking at a face. 
So yeah, we're seeing a little bit of the nose, the eyes are kind of there, but what's really there is the contrast, the contrast between the color of the skin and the color of the hair. And we find through eye tracking that infants that are around one or two months of age, they spend a lot of time looking at the contrast along the hairline and looking at the contrast along the jawline and not so much time looking at the eyes, nose, or mouth. Of course, as they get older, around five months of age, they're more so gonna see what's in the middle picture. Now things are a little bit clearer, and they're going to notice if the eyes are upside down or if the mouth is upside down or what have you. And then of course, by the time an infant's one year of age, they're going to see similar to what adults can see. Though everybody might be different in terms of their vision, in terms of if they need corrective lenses or not, infants are pretty good at seeing things when they're about a year of age. So now when we think of all those things combined, resolution, faces, color, how does this play out in terms of visual depth? We actually find infants are pretty okay with this by the time they're about nine months of age. And this surprised us for many reasons. One classic study called the visual cliff study is the idea that we would put an infant on a tabletop. Now the tabletop was safe. It was flat and it was made of glass. It didn't have any tilt or any ramp to it. And there was a little border around it. The infant couldn't fall off and the researchers and a caregiver were there and present to help. But what made this study really interesting is under the glass surface, they would lay a tablecloth. And in the classic study, this tablecloth would be a checker pattern. So it would be red and black squares in a checkerboard pattern. And what would happen is under the glass tabletop, there would be a wooden tabletop in which the table in which the tablecloth was laid. And the infant would be placed in the center of the table on one side below the glass surface, they could see the checker pattern going down on a gradual incline. And on the other side, the, the cloth went down on a very steep incline. And so the aim here was to see if the infant could differentiate between the checkerboard pattern going down gradually or going down steeply, and if they would get a sense of depth. The study was successful. What we find is that the infant would crawl towards the edge of the table that had just a shallow decline, but would not go the other way. They would hesitate and they would not climb on the one that had the steep one. Now this has been done in many iterations and we've also found that if their parent is there and the parent has a toy or a smile on their face, the infant will crawl to either end. But if the parent has a neutral or sad or shocked expression, the infant will only crawl to the shallow end and not to the steep end. So although our sense of sight is the least developed at birth, it changes rapidly in the first year of life and becomes our most advanced sense throughout our lifespan. That being said, it eventually will decline as well. And much like with hearing, it is a use it then lose it phenomena in which people who read more and spend more time on screens tend to require corrective lenses at a younger age. And over time, even with the usage of corrective lenses, by the time we're 80, roughly 17% of us will not be able to read or make sense of letters and words even with our glasses on. So although sight is really important, it's important to understand over the lifespan, we might become more reliant on other mechanisms to get a sense of our reality.